good evening and welcome to this act of worship and reflection this evening on this Monday of Holy Week. This evening I'm going to offer you uh, night prayer, otherwise known as Compline, uh, with the daily Eucharistic uh, Gospel reading together with a short reflection. If you're at home you might like to be seated quietly as we prepare to worship God. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our reading is from St John's Gospel chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse, and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Here ends the reading. Jesus was gracious in his attitude towards Mary and praises her, her act of love towards him. We can almost smell the fragrance of this beautiful perfume, this pound jar of pure nard, which represents a wonderful act of gratitude as it fills the whole house. This scene is given to us on Monday in Holy Week. In a few days' time, Jesus will die on a cross. We're given an insight into the minds of other people referred to in the story. Mary centres her attention on Jesus and honours him in an unusual way, letting us know just how much she thinks of him. Incidentally, a denarius was the average daily wage paid to a labourer. So 300 denarii is the best part of a year's wages. That pound of perfume, pure nard, costs the best part of a year's wages for a labourer. This was an extravagant act on Mary's part. She really does think highly of Jesus. Judas, of course, he criticises the waste of the ointment. If we do a bit of maths, we can see that Mary's gift was ten times the amount that, Jesus, that Judas received for betraying Jesus. Jesus, aware of his forthcoming agony and death, is completely composed and answers Judas. Yet there is, I suppose, something logical to Judas's response, that we know that God does not act in logical ways. God's ways are not our ways, and Mary's act might well seem illogical to us. The home of Martha and Mary in Bethany was always a place of welcome and refuge for Jesus. With his life increasingly under threat, he chooses to enjoy a meal there with his friends. But Mary's action of anointing his feet with costly perfume causes friction. Judas, as we know, objects to such extravagance. Jesus defends Mary and links her action with his coming death and burial. Whose side are you on? 
perhaps you can see some validity in what Judas says. Yet it is Mary who continues to be admired for her loving and uninhibited gesture. Jesus was open-hearted enough to receive Mary's gift, the most costly gift that she could find, even though it would have gone a long way to help the poor. What is our gift to Jesus? That's something for us to reflect on, to ponder in this Holy Week. All he asks of us is the gift of our loving hearts. Shortly after Mary's loving gift, Jesus will himself wash his disciples' feet in a similar act of love and humility. The mystery of salvation is whether we will accept absolute and unconditional love and allow it to envelop us wholly. Will we embrace that free, uninhibited gift of divine love, given to us as a pure act of grace? Mary was able to be extravagant and generous and was not held back by the opinions of those around her. It was a spontaneous gesture. We can reflect her generosity and God's goodness to us by how we share our material resources, our goodwill, our love and our forgiveness. Holy Week invites us to spend time with Jesus, not for any logical reason, but simply to accompany a much and deeply loved friend. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the grace to keep a good Holy Week as we journey with our Lord Jesus Christ and through the events of his passion, to his death and ultimately to his resurrection. We pray that you would give us grace to follow him in this week of all weeks. As we ask in his name. Amen. Pray too for those who are in isolation at this time. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid or in isolation. In their loneliness be their consolation, in their anxiety be their hope, in their darkness be their light, through him who suffered alone on the cross but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves, and keep us in your care. Amen. And so we use those famous words, the words of the Nunc Dimittis. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us in peace, and may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand, and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. And now may the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Thank you for watching, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to join us again uh, for some more reflections uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday of Holy Week.